Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Happy Being Well. We have an exciting guest today as we always, always do and an exciting topic as well. We have Dr. Melissa Crane today with us and she is a spiritual teacher and author and we're going to be discussing, you know, as we all know, we're always, always evolving with each generation um we're, we're always there's always a new buzzword like now where everyone's focusing on you know narcissist is a buzzword self-love is a buzzword um and also you know females tapping more into their femininity because um in our society you know for, for most women who are participating in the business world you know, in whatever capacity, either it's a, you know, you're a lawyer, you're a business executive, or you're just an actual business, you know, an, you're operating a business yourself, you have to adapt those masculine traits in order to thrive, you know, to avoid being crushed, essentially. Um, so, so now, you know, we're seeing more and more, you know, coaches, teach women to tap more into their femininity. Like this needs to be like trained again. <laughs> so, um, you know, in order to, for various reasons, um, I think, I think a, a lot of it, I've been noticing a lot of like dating coaches, like tr train women now to tap more into their femininity to kind of have a much more healthier relationship with their male counterparts for a lot of reasons, right? So we're going to be discussing this with Melissa. And before we dive deep with Melissa, this podcast is sponsored by happybeingwell.com, your online store for leggings, 100% facial masks, natural essential oils, aromatherapy diffusers, natural deodorants, crystals, sage, Palo Santo, natural bath soaps, and much more at happybeingwell.com. Use code podcast 25 for 25% off all leggings, free shipping and all items in the USA. So Melissa, welcome to the Happy Being Well podcast. Thank you, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. And I know you, you, know, you share wonderful guided meditations on Clubhouse and you've been a spiritual teacher for a long time and I just didn't just I just figured we'll just tap into this like what have you discovered on your journey up until today you know as women with all you know we're always focusing on something you know each generation is like we're figuring something out we're, we're it's like it's like we're figuring out a certain puzzle piece and that's why we tend to hone in on certain buzzwords um like there's always a new buzzword with every like I don't know maybe like every five years we get a new we figured a new puzzle piece that we need to focus on. So now it's like self-love, femininity, um, people are learning about narcissists, more and more people recognizing narcissistic behavior, which is great. Um, and now we're also focusing, we're all as a collective um, that, you know, we need to heal, heal our inner, inner traumas. So I just figured, you know, tapping into like what you've discovered and we can dive into like femininity, like, as women, what do you see us going? This is a great topic as I myself uh, functioned, I call it my past life, from a place of always feeling like I needed to do, always feeling like I needed to prove something about myself, prove my worth through doing something. Um, Back in the day before the whole pandemic, I practiced as a chiropractor and, you know, I assumed the role of the fixer, right? So people would come to see me and then it was like, I had this thought and this belief that, well, I have to, to take their pain away, right? They're in pain and so I have to do a thing. And then I had to, <clears throat> my survival was based on you know, my job and people making appointments and having to show up. And it was this, this constant <clears throat> go, 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 do, do, do. And towards the end, um, right, well, right before the, the, 
the lockdown hit, I was starting to like question, is this, is this truly in alignment with how I want to be, how I want to live? Is this in alignment with my values? And do I want to do this anymore? And so it was that notion of like, okay, I need to take a break. I need to step back and just reassess what's going on which then led into a lot of time on my own to just listen and receive and get really honest with myself. So I think it is, it's important that, that we take that time as we move forward to tap back into ourselves. And like I was saying before of what are our, what's our value system? what's really important and to learn again that it's okay to first of all not really know (laughs) and to change and to just be to tap into that flow because as women you know we are the birthers we birth creation And if there's something that we know to be true is that there's always change. There's always cycles, you know, mother earth herself in a constant state of cycles and seasons and something blooms and then it dies and then it, it reforms. And so us as women and everyone, as we all have that feminine energy within us, if we can start to embody that, I think that moving forward as we create these, this new way of being, that um, it'll happen with a little bit more ease and grace. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. And I mean, I also see, I am seeing, it seems like, I feel like this, the feminine energy, you know, I feel like it's, we're kind of tapping more into it and it's kind of like being celebrated more and being rec- being more appreciated. You know, I feel like from what I'm hearing, in whatever community, it's the new age community, spiritual community, um, or just personal development community. Um, I am, I, I, we are, we're kind of seeing, I'm seeing like a recognition, a recognition of the importance of the female feminine energy. Um, you know, whereas in the past, you know, masculine energy was more celebrated because the masculine energy can, you know, is protection. Masculine energy is, um, you know, the breadwinner, you know, providing, providing for the family. Masculine energy is success, strength. And so, um, whereas the female energy was kind of, I would say down, maybe like not as, not as celebrated. Like it was like, like, yeah, they're the nurturers, the caring, you know, mothers, um, giving birth, but it was like, you know, if we just look at the culture from like 50s, 60s, 70s, right? Um, yeah, it's interesting, you know, as we're, as we're unfolding a newer age, as we're, you know, going through lessons we've learned from the past and now, I, I mean, I would love to see everybody embrace self-love and actually heal their inner traumas. Something, that's something I'm very, very passionate about because we would just be a lot more, you know, healthier as an overall society, but even, even on the individual level, it always starts with the individual level and then we can have a stronger collective consciousness around it. And it's just so much, you're just, you're just much more, you have so much more clarity once, and you're so much more empowered. And, you know, you're just, you're, I would say empowered clarity in the ability to actually love yourself strengthens and your ability, which, and it all starts with connecting with yourself. I would say that the foundation, well, self-awareness then connecting with yourself, right? To be able to kind of go deep so what, what have you learned through your journey in terms of, you know, healing, like what's been your healing journey or watching others heal and like, 
like I know a lot of people avoid it. <laughs> don't they don't like <laughs> to do trauma work or even even to recognize um, that they've had trauma or talk about it or even think about it, right? It's not sexy. Mm -hmm. It's not something the ego likes to think about or admit, right? Because we all have an ego to varying degrees and the ego likes to shut that out and just it to keep us safe. You know, it's like, it's, it's there to keep, to keep us safe. And, you know, based on what we've known to be true. And it's like when those lessons that we learn through our life's experience, when they're not the, the pleasant ones, uh you know we tend to brush those things under the rug you know we don't want to look at that stuff because it didn't feel good and this is what i learned the most through when i had my practice when i was um you know working on the physical body and just like with pain and the discomforts it was like i i saw that you know obviously we're so much more than skin and bones you know, we are energetic beings and we have the mental body and we have the emotional body. We have our spiritual body, right? Layer upon layer. And the physical is the densest. It's the last thing for this energy to, to um, manifest through so that we can really start paying attention to where it is, to what those things are that are wanting us to love and look at and acknowledge to bring that back in and integrate. You know, the fact that I love it when you said it's like having this clarity and this empowerment. Well, that comes by, by being like in alignment with our highest self, with our highest soul's expression based on that strong foundation of whatever that is for you. For me, it's, it's, it's peace, it's love, it's harmony. But where we get pulled astray, like off of that path, are, this, are those, um, the fear. Fear is, is so big. The, the shame, the self-judgment, the self-doubt, the denial, and the repression of our truest desires. And they show up, they show up in our world in the way we feel in, in our body. It's like, it's like a dashboard on a car, right? The car lights light up. It's like <laughs> check engine soon, but it's like, nah, 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 we were okay. We keep going, we keep going, we keep going. And then stuff manifests so that we can slow down and we can take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's like, you know, if you hold on to trauma and you don't do the work to identify it and figure, you know, just relive it. Nobody wants to relive it. I'm, you know, relive it. And so that you can actually just release it from your body and just recognize like, what's the lesson you needed to learn from this. And because, you know, whatever, like traumas that we experience, you know, we, it took me a long time to even recognize or know that a trauma does not have to be a violent, an act of violence. It doesn't have to be like a big, you know, situation because this is what led me to constantly recreate the same toxic relationship over and over and over, whether they be friends, whether they be, you know, um, you know, intimate relationships, it was just like constant like cycle. And because, you know, they, that was a familiarity based on my childhood. And so, you know, for the longest time, like, oh, I don't have any childhood dramas. I don't have any childhood dramas. Well, I didn't realize the, what that actually encompasses like you know trauma does not have to be an act of physical violence so you know until one actually goes and figures that out and goes deep um your trauma is going to prevent you from you know act you know activating your higher self activating your empowerment activating self-love activating full clarity because 
your traumas are, you're going to recreate that feeling in your nervous system because you're so familiar with that feeling of anxiety, um, the feeling of, because you've been coexisting with it for so long. So you're just going to produce, situ or be in situations, attract situations that produce that anxiety, produce that. And you're gonna be, you're not gonna achieve clarity because you're gonna be operating from a state of chaos and confusion. You know, when you're in, when you have anxiety, how could you possibly think clearly um, and, and live from a state of empowerment, like taking massive action and not let other voices influence you, you know, allowing, hearing your actual true voice and trusting your intuition and, tr and trusting yourself as opposed to basically you're just going all, you're having an, a chaotic nervous system and you're living from a state of confusion, that's just going to, you know, you're, you're not, you're just going to be all over the place, right? You're just going to be living from a state of doubt, um, state of a whole whack of wackadoodles. <laughs> um, yeah. Or, you know, I think some people can function like that. Like they have, because they have their job, they go and do their job every day and they come home, they have this certain routine they're not really happy with the job. They're just, they're just coexisting in it um, until perhaps, you know, something happens, some, until you hit your breaking point. Some people can actually do it and, and, and do it until maybe they retire, you know, people can, <laughs> but right. they're not usually happy, right? They're in the, you're aging faster. I mean, you're not living it from a place of full vitality. And I think collectively where we are recognizing that, and this is why we have the great resonation as well. I think people are actually, I think the lockdown provided an opportunity for people to actually not be so busy doing like we've been conditioned to do. <laughs> we've been like human doings, not human beings for the most part, right? And um, so I think this is why we're seeing this you know, mass resonation, people like wanting, having to have a much more wellness and healthful, healthy lifestyle and start to tap into their true passions, true desires more. We are seeing this now. And I think being, being alone and having that time to actually self-reflect and be help, helping them kind of tune into their bodies you know, after they're freaking out about being alone, I mean, at some point, I think people had to go within and discover some clarity and truth. So it's kind of exciting that we're kind of seeing that. Yeah, and there's, you know, you have to be willing to do it. You know, we have choice, we have free will. We, if, if, we, if we choose to continue going, right, you're going to, get what you've always got. And if that's okay with, with you, that's your choice, so be it. But if we want to live in a world of our wildest imaginations, of what we know to be possible someplace within, we have to be willing to to not be victim to that you know it's like once we just take time and are courageous enough to become really honest with where we have perhaps betrayed our own heart abandon our desires, abandon our own self, abandon our inner child, then that's where we can start bringing that family, I like to call that lives within our hearts back together, right? Because as we were talking before about the, the masculine and the feminine, that energy it exists within all of us. There's the yin mm -hmm. and there's the yang. And then there's that pure, innocent child. And there needs to be a harmonious and happy household 
going on inside of allowing ourselves time to to relax and have self care and and do those things too that bring us joy and then act with in service for the highest good of all and in our in also for our own self and to continue allowing ourselves to be curious about new things mm -hmm. and trying new things. And it's sometimes it's, it's easy to get really caught up in the yang, right? Really go. And then also it's also possible to get, you know, caught up in, in the yin of just like, oh gosh, I don't even know how to start again. Right. So, um, yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot. It's not easy. It's like, oh, okay, I'm just going to heal and love myself and everything's going to be great. It's like, okay, no, like this is, that's work too, yeah. you know? So we have to like, think of it that way. It's like, for those of us that have, that really made these huge transformational shifts in our life, it's like, we can get in our own heads. I know I have, I'll speak from my own experience. It's like, you can get in your head of like, I'm not doing enough. Like what am what am I even like, do I even have a purpose anymore? Like I'm not, I'm not working in the way I used to work. And our ego and not our working. ego, our but it, we are like that inner work, that inner child work, that working on the wounded feminine, the wounded masculine, like that's a lot of energy you going in and integrating and forgiving and looking at it and then crying and then you need to sleep it out and you need to do all those things that's doing you know that's doing mm -hmm. so it's a whole like restructuring of our mental bodies of what we've been taught of like how we are to function in the world mm. well i i don't know it, it's good. It just, we were never taught. It was never taught. And it was just never like exposed. It was never a cool thing to do in the, in the mainstream media. You know, when we watch movies, like we don't see, you know, Julia Roberts, like saying, I, oh yes, I'm going to heal my inner traumas. And, you know, it's just, we weren't like really taught this. We were just conditioned, you know, we, we, first of all, look how much years that we spent in school being indoctrinated just to get a job. Like we went, we had just, you know, easy kindergarten, elementary school, eight years, high school, four years. Then it's, you know, a university or a college, which is an additional like four years just for your bachelor's. And if you want to continue on to your PhD, yeah. two years for your master's. And then I think it's like maybe like two or four years for your PhD, right? It's like the amount of schooling. I mean, you could very well stop at your bachelor's but I mean just at the bachelor's level I mean look how much schooling that we've gotten and that's just you know to function in society to hold be a responsible citizen um the indoctrination all those years of being indoctrinated to be a responsible and functioning citizen of society so we kind of have to look at it that way too it's like well it this is not a one day weekend retreat where you're just healed and it's gonna happen and you're empowered and clear and it you're good <laughs> it's like it is like an everyday process to really first of all get that awareness fully understand it process it and then actually do the techniques in order to clear your subconscious of traumas and then in order to be able to activate yourself in a higher level of functioning in terms of really loving yourself in order to like really create the life that you love living and that you're more empowered too, you're more strong within yourself because you're not trusting your intuition, you're not doubting yourself based on all those traumas too. And the projections too, like your, you know, your traumas also well, you're, you're going to be projecting that onto other people and situations too, which, you know, again, you're just going to be recreating, right? So it's so, so vital. And, um, and also too, I think it needs, it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen in one session either. If you do trauma 
work. <laughs> it's like an onion. There's just, cause there's been so many life experiences that we've had since being a baby. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And we're like, not only clearing our trauma, we're clearing the trauma of like the bloodlines, right? Like this is, this is through the eons of time of like in, in our DNA. Like if you think of like a root system, underneath the ground right and just all this just this knot of of threads right okay so like the image that they're showing me right now like it's like you know if you have a, a necklace strand or you have a couple necklaces and then they just get wadded up into this one massive knot it kind of takes some time to go in there with a pin, you know, and to start unraveling stuff to, to have just freedom, freedom. But yeah, it's like you were saying like this from school, from growing up within our family units, we can't blame anyone because it's like we only know what we know right and it's like and then you know people have done like the best that they could so that's where it's like having that compassion and forgiveness for like you're doing what you knew mm -hmm. and so then it's like this is but this is the time now that i feel like the collective is entering where we're like looking back we're like this doesn't make sense right like we are not robots <laughs> like, we are not all the same especially from little kids little kids oh my gosh like they are our teachers they are the truest teachers i look at my nephew and i'm like what is he doing okay so he's eating blueberries and he's doing something with his hand and stomping his like i'm just gonna follow his lead because he's onto something and it's like their imagination and their creativity and the way they do things if we were all, you know, met there and allow that creative genius that lives in us at the forefront as children, then this world would be a completely different place because we would be acting from our gifts, from our innate gifts, our uniqueness, our authenticity, what we're good at, because we're not all good at the same things. We need to have this harmonious existence, this coexistence that bring out the best in all of us. But that hasn't happened. That didn't happen. <laughs> and so then we go through this whole thing and we get all these layers, we put up all these bars and we have this big wadded necklace knot. And then and then we have to start unwinding it. But um I think, I think maybe again, as you're talking about that, it's like, maybe, you know, we've been, you know, as a society kind of been extreme. It's like, it's like we're focusing on something and we're just kind of like, it's just that one, like, for example, as you're talking about the child, because now the child has not been indoctrinated, you know, into sight, right. It's just all, all it's responsible for doing is just eating and going to sleep and waking up and playing with their friends and, um like they're not we've we've formulated a structure in society right to prevent chaos right like we have street lights so that people are not crashing into cars you know we pay taxes so that we have a government that's supposed to oversee us and everything to have order right so and so we have schools and our children go to schools so you know basically order so <laughs> if we were all like, let's just say, like, let's just play around with the thought. Like, let's just say that we we were, like, never indoctrinated and we never went to school and we're never really taught to, like, behave a certain way as adults or whatever. And we, and we see the child and, like, let that child, you know, I don't know. Uh, we would just, maybe it would be chaotic. Who knows? Or maybe we need to have that balance, like you said earlier, of, like, we we shouldn't be abandoning us being children, having that sense of child excitement. And plus you're tapping into your true self, not abandoning yourself. 
because children don't do that or judging yourself because children don't do that. But then again, we are learned to do that to function in society. So it's like, it's kind of a tricky, you know, conundrum or, you know, it's a tricky little thing that's happening, you know, in order to have order and, and structure in our society, right? Um, so I think it's like, maybe we just need to allow to have that childlike curiosity or, you know, staying in our truth, but not abandoning order or structure altogether, <laughs> right? It just needs to have that more of that balance instead of being so extreme, I, supp I suppose it seems like as you're just oh yeah yeah we i mean and that's the thing that's where we're at now is like the more of us that wake up to this this awareness it's like taking all that we've learned throughout our lives so we're not just children at with like blank slate of having this you know run and rampant no it's like we can embrace the childlike sense of wonder and have our inner mother, our inner father, our divine source connection and dismantle the old systems as to then recreate new systems that are offering the form that, the, you know, and the flow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's a lot that's ahead of us. There's a lot of change that's going, um, I feel, needs to happen and um and therein lies the chaos potential chaos because there's that fear of the uncertainty there's the fear of the unknown there's the fear of the change and so then we get you can get caught back up in that perpetual loop of like well let's just stick with what's known because it's the way it's always been and blah 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 and it's like no <laughs> that wasn't working right it's not working mm -hmm. yeah i mean i would love to you know we can get to a point in society where we just like no longer have these fear-based behaviors you know in terms of addictions and narcissists and you know it would be so cool if like everyone was just like really just do heal trauma because it, it all comes from trauma mainly or you know or they've learned the behavior from a parent but again it's always if that parent if we keep tracking back to okay they learned it from so that parent did it why did that parent do it either they've had the trauma and they adopted those behaviors or they you know it's just this generational trauma thing you know basically perpetuating itself and throughout the family lineage. Um, yeah, and I, and I, and it's like, in the, and I'm hearing so much about healing trauma, which I'm so happy about, because that really is the, really truly the key ingredient, the secret key to all of this, unlocking true harmony and self-love and, and harmony with others too, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sure we've all been in a workplace where, you know, works, there's a jealousy and betrayal and sophisticated manipulation games, right? Because they fear that you're outshining them and they're, you're going to get the promotion and they're going to get demoted or fired or whatever, right? So it's like, uh, you know, and a lot of it is, again, fear, right? Running on fear. And if people could just tap into more harmony work together you know and really just kind of focus on just the the good stuff of life you know and it comes down to compassion right <clears throat> because once we have compassion then we're able to forgive so if we can look back to times in our life when we've been on each side of the coin you know, it's like when we talk about trauma of these things that, that have been done that we've experienced, rather than just identifying with this, this happened to me, right? It's that whole shift of like, okay, well, perhaps this happened for me. And I know that that can be a really triggering thing or hard to understand of like, how could this happen for me? 
when this was just so awful and blah, blah, blah. But, and I'm not too, I'm not um, diminishing that. But when we can begin to look at each and everything that we have experienced as a lesson of just how strong we are, just how courageous we are. And also when we can just step into another person's shoes or see how perhaps we ourselves did showed up in certain ways it's like we're able to then forgive and once we can forgive then that shadow aspect or that thing that's just been under the rug we can just integrate that back in our heart and we can just open up and expand on and it doesn't hold us in shackles anymore of like you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. It's it really for me, it comes down to compassion. Like when I think about my past and growing up and, you know, being a teenager and with my mom and, and with my dad of like, I look now back on it and I'm able to see things just in a completely new way than perhaps when we're in it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, we don't see it until hindsight of like, whoa, okay, I get it now. And then I see how then I've done this in other relationships. And then it like goes around this whole thing of like, yeah, it's, it's a lot. But um, that's where I think we start to free ourselves from that mm -hmm. that's cycle of trauma. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly how we free ourselves by ending that cycle. Yeah. And the ending the cycle of trauma. And, um, and I think, and, it, and, you know, and it's really easy to not be aware of it either. Like I mentioned, I wasn't for the longest time until I hit that crashing point. It's like, oh my, cause it's just, you know, what happened with me, it was like, I would be dating a series of narcissistic men but each one just kind of got more narcissistic like more like you know wars in terms of um just being more sophisticated in having more narcissistic tendencies until i you know got into one that had full-blown narcissistic personality disorder and then you know so that's what happens you're, you know the universe you're just going to keep you're going to keep graduating into much more severe, um, I guess you could say trauma or just much more to a point where it's going to exhaust you if you don't figure out what it is that you're re recreating or reproducing to try to change the original event, right? right. So, and in my case, the original event, I couldn't even really recognize that even though I was doing a lot of um, you know, timeline therapy, NLP timeline, you know, going back into the original event, like going back into the original event of fear, or anger, but there's just so many <laughs> that you go through and um, to kind of get to the major roots of it. So it's like, it's, it's an, it just, a, it just, it just, it's just a, just a huge journey. And then that's when you finally get free and you stop those patterns and then you become much more strong and empowered and that's when you're just really just able to actually listen and trust your intuition as well. And, you know, you're no longer mm, um, living life by default, like just living life, you know, having the external kind of push you around, right? You're then able to just like be a force and like kind of just create the world around you as opposed to letting you know outside individuals kind of kind of push you around in the energetic sense of the word um you know like try to because a lot of people because most people have traumas that haven't been healed so therefore a lot of people like control and they like to control others right so 
like you know covertly or whatever through the, and they so they just they just like it it makes them feel safe and so um not like not like like little minor things like maybe trying to influence you to do something you know influence you to do something or whatever just because of sense of control so once you are able to stand in your own truth listen to your intuition and right and plus you have to recognize these behaviors the more and more you're a master of human behavior the more and more you're just able to know what's right know what's true and honor yourself and know and not feel guilty about um for me i'm a recovering codependent and it took me oh my god i just discovered that just recently again you know um so not having to you know codependents get their worth by a you know pleasing others fixing their problem um it's like i have sense of obligation to do so um you know like <laughs> it's crazy it's just and meanwhile the people that i mean i would even be driving and putting my own life in danger you know picking up a phone making sure someone's okay and I'm on the highway or freeway and yeah it, you know um but yet those individuals would not recipro reciprocate but um it doesn't really matter the point is you're abandoning yourself because you're just completely just so absorbed in others you're so absorbed in the external yeah reflecting the internal so that being said, what are some of your favorite ways to connect with yourself, to go internal? Well, meditation has just been, that's an everyday, that's a non-negotiable for me. And that was one of the first things I would abandon upon getting in different relationships because I, I, I can connect with the whole, you know, um, the narcissistic, the codependence, I was like relationship after relationship, whatever. And, and I would always uh, set aside my spiritual practice. And so that has been huge to, to channel in spirit the living light to visualize because we don't give our imaginations the credit i think that it um, deserves too it's like to uh envision ourselves in peace to feel what peace is to feel and sense and recreate and imagine how it is that we want to be right so taking that that was for me a big thing of uh you know people say like manifestation work or or like vision board stuff it's like that kind of thing but just like in mind in it within um painting has been huge for me right now just to like get that energy out you know to move that energy. So it's like receiving and then as things kind of bubble up to the surface and stuff like to just get it out or, or journaling, any kind of uh, expression of the energy is big. Um, and it can be anything for anyone, right? Like going outside into nature, playing music, dancing, getting in your car and screaming could be a meditation really <laughs> like just to be present with yourself yeah. and uh yeah like that's the other thing there's no right or wrong way to be with your own self mm -hmm. so yeah but meditation big time and like finding that community too i love clubhouse so much i know that's where you found me it's like to be with people where you can talk and express your truth and not care of like what you sound like, what you look like, what are people going to think? And like, you can hear someone of like, oh my gosh, they're going through the same thing I ever, they, it's like, there's such support there that 
that is that's therapy right to just be seen held heard and be able to express what's on your heart that's where they that's where the healing comes from so just be, feeling safe to be you mm -hmm. absolutely but you need to connect with yourself first in order to know who you are <laughs> <laughs> that I just feel or like. sometimes it helps like to talk with others because we don't even know right and it's like when we it's only like through relationship when someone reflects back to you of like oh like okay and then it's not like trauma bonding right of like just per like really strengthening that that trauma bond like no like but if we can empower one another to you know, to see things in a different way, or this is what worked for me. It's, it's like this beautiful dance of, uh, Oh, I, I totally agree. I, I, once you try to get yourself healthy, healthy minded, um, and connecting with yours, I think you just need, you need that balance of like, having the, the alone time to do the self reflection, connect with yourself, feel that inner peace, and then you're going to start attracting high vibing people anyways, where you can be in a safer place, where you're not going to be, you're going to mitigate the probability of being around people that will gaslight you or, you know, be control freaks um, or try to manipulate you or whatever. And plus also too, because you're strengthening your intuition, when you do encounter these individuals, you're going to quickly recognize it and you're going to be really strong to walk away without any guilt uh, or shame or regret around it either because you now know truth and you know your own truth and you're actually doing them a favor by walking away because by staying with um, these people giving them attention or rewarding them with your time energy and friendship when they're not really giving you a real friendship back um, you are enabling them so they're going to continue on doing this behavior to you and others. So you are actually doing them a favor by walking away and cutting them off. Um, and the more and more, cause I feel like, you know, the, everyone's kind of screaming narcissism, nar narcissistic abuse because it went on for so long and there wasn't a mass discussion about it in order for, I mean, it took me, I ran into the material by accident in 2017 and I you know been on personal development journey for so many years uh I've taken psychology courses in school and I was in university you know what I mean I, I mean I didn't even know fully what narcissistic personality disorder was and I just thought that narc was vanity self um absorbed selfish I didn't really realize the sophisticated tactics and techniques and how they operate it's all operating from a place of um, you know, you're just a, a, a supply of energy for them and everything is systematic in terms of the cycles of ups and downs, rewards and punishments designed to condition you to, um, to have you behave a certain way that benefits them. And that's your only function in the relationship is benefiting them. <laughs> that's it, right? So, um, and they are really good at disguising it, that it's an actual genuine relationship or friendship, right? With these um, rewards of like grandiose gestures of like caring and kindness and attention at times, but that's just designed to keep you hooked till they get whatever else that they need you to do for them, right? So, and if you don't, you get punished in, in various forms that could just be um, not talking to you or whatever it is, right? So yeah, it, that, you know, I, so I feel like, I'm so glad people are talking about it. So I just feel like people are now kind of recognizing it more because it's been happening on a mass scale so much. That's why we're having all these conversations around it. People are just kind of more and more kind of getting like fed up with the toxic energy. I think that we've enabled a toxic culture for so long. And I think people are recognizing that. Yeah. 
the need for for boundaries is really big and boundaries doesn't have to mean like that you're keeping someone out like you said it's we're not doing anybody any favors by um suppressing what it is to that we know to be true for us right it's like especially in this in this time right now with like the eclipse season and um these new cycles starting it's it's really coming down to um you know after this entire life that we've lived all these experience all this wisdom that we've gained i dare to say that there if everyone were to just contemplate for a second on something that they know needs to go like that that drawer that junk drawer or like that to-do list like that thing like ah oh, i got to do this this really this has got to go but yet we don't do it because it could be it could be letting go of that relationship that um that was really big or in your life like especially when it comes with within family members or or, or jobs or something that it's like okay I have to go this way and you have to go this way. And that's okay because by 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 removing yourself and going back into the path that that you know to be true for you of where you want to go that's in alignment with your values all the things like that is reciprocal where you're surrounding yourself with the the balance of give and take that you're feeling joy within then that frees up space for the other to do their work and to continue on their journey. And so it's being really brave, right? If we can just talk to that little person inside of us too, that's kind of scared. Like, I don't know, like, am I going to be safe if I, if I let this go? It's like, yes. And that's where, you know, mom and dad put those boundaries on of like, you're good. You're good. Mm -hmm. And it's a better world for all involved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it takes a minute to like get there, right? Of like even recognizing like, oh my gosh, like this person, this is not a, this is not a healthy relationship. Like for me, it was like I had stayed in relationships well past the expiration point of like, how many red flags do I need to paint white before I get the memo? But then you get it. Finally, as those things got louder, like you were saying, like you keep going around this this cycle, right? And it's like the, the the breadcrumbs get bigger, the messages get louder, the signs get shinier, and then sometimes spirit will just take the wheel of like, all right, move over. This has got to go. This has got to go. So uh, yeah, there's always a message, mm -hmm. and you get our attention. Absolutely, it's it's. Um... It's like when we, it's like if we actually just understand nature, if we go deep into nature, we understand everything. Like, for example, when we get cut or when we break in our, it hurts, right? It hurts for a reason. It's a signal like, hey, you need to pay attention to this. You need to put a band, clean it out, put a band in on it before it gets infected, right? Or, you know, or I'll, imagine if we didn't have pain, physical pain, if we were to like, break a leg and we continued walking or running because we had no idea like it's you know something's been fractured in our bones we would further cause damage to it right so it's the same thing with our lives you know in, in other respects right so and also too it's also really difficult to leave these toxic relations because i was there too and everybody i'm sure can relate to how difficult it is especially if you're a codependent or an empath i'm an empath and a codependent <laughs> and um and i had these individuals as family members as well so this is something that was familiar as well was i was used to, and also to you're trying to change the original event so you're trying to change the original time it happened with a certain perhaps family member right so it's like you're recreating it thinking that you're going to change them because you're trying to change you know it's like a, it turns into like some kind of subconscious game that you get addicted to that you're trying to like change so that if you change them it proves 
you know, your worth and that's where Nirvana is going to take place. And, you know, um, and all, it's just so many variables involved as to why you get so hooked in also to the trauma bond is very powerful. Your bond, that creates a bond when you're going through cycles of rewards and punishments um, because you get addicted to the rewards. And typically these individuals are really good at giving good rewards, like really knowing how to showcase grandiose gestures of care and they cater, they customize the rewards based on your personality. Right. They don't have like a cookie cutter they, based on what they know that you really like because they've studied you like they know you. Right. So they know how to trigger you. So, um, yeah, that's another reason the body gets addicted from those emotions, because when you go through a punishment cycle with these individuals, like when you notice a red flag, for example, um, you know, after that will pass and a reward is going to come because you're, they've conditioned you. So you're on this like roller coaster and you can't get off the wheel because your body is addicted to those emotions that they've been producing. So that's mm -hmm. a major reason why it's difficult to walk away from these toxic relationships. And, right. and being, a, and also too, it's like, you feel bad. Well, I know I, yeah, I would feel bad. Empath, could, I would feel bad and, and guilty like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be for, I'm not going to be there for them. And, you know, <laughs> that's another component to it as well. The guilt, yeah, all that. It's so much involved. That's why it's, yeah, it's, it is. It's extremely difficult. Um, but until it's like always, usually until you really hit like a breaking point of like, wow, this is like, I, you cannot continue living like this. It's taking too much away from you. It right. It's too draining. And then you realize if I continue on, I'm just going to keep losing more and more energy, having more and more stress and anxiety, and then it will cause consequences in your life, perhaps health, your career, you know, like it starts to like actually can, will start to trickle into it. It takes time, but it will eventually take a toll on your life. And you said something there that's that's huge, how it can start to affect your health. Because um, as you mentioned, you know, thank, thank goodness for pain, right? As it's a signal. But honestly, only 10% of potentially harmful stimuli gets responded to in the brain. So it's like, we only notice 10% of all of the noxious stuff around us, like things that could be potentially harmful to us, which is a protective mechanism because literally if, if our bodies responded to every single thing that wasn't in the most harmonic resonance with us, we wouldn't be able to function. I mean, we had, it's like a, a little filter, but that being said, if you could imagine all of this stuff, like the more subtle things, the more energetic. So the, the, the toxic um, or uh, better word is um, like almost like those self-destructive limiting belief systems that we place on ourselves, or those, those lower vibrating emotions of the fear, shame, guilt, um, you know, denial, that stuff that's existing within us from just enduring all of this stuff where does that go the energy doesn't just go away right that's like in us and this is where i was saying how things like start to filter down and sometimes yes it'll come through as pain and then depending on where on the body it manifests there's a little signal there there's a map although we don't have the owner's manual to this thing you know dropping down but also like that could go into more um, like chronic diseases and, and th those cancers and that, like, it's just, it starts to harvest and go and go. And it's like, so it's so important to not dismiss the stuff that is trying 
to speak to us. And then once we do see it, once we are aware of it, once we know that this isn't okay, like if, if I, I love to work with the inner child because it's like, would we, would we talk to a three-year-old sometimes the way we talk to ourselves? Would we subject our, like a little three-year-old in a relationship that we do our own self? Half the time, like, no, more than half the time. You know what I'm saying though? It's like, but we, yeah, we do this. And this is where, like, that was a big eye opener for me of like, oh my gosh, I was just so abusive to my own self. And then it goes into that, that whole forgiveness, forgiveness of self, because we only know that what we know at that time, right? And then it goes into just, then it goes into the relationships outward. But before I go off on another rabbit hole, I'm going to pause right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, another, that's another important component of why it's so important to, you know, recognize and heal our traumas because there's just so much domino effects that can take place. We're recreating them, you know, in our environment, in our relationships and situations, and also because we're involved in these toxic situations or relationships as a result of the trauma we're holding the original trauma um it can it you're going to be experiencing in your body the anxiety the stress the building up building up like all those episodes that you've experienced it and it gets built built up in the body like toxins get it's actually it is it like becomes like toxins it's like you know and it's in the body and it can manifest in a lot of people have back pain. A lot of people seem to like put their stress into the back is a common manifestation. Um, you know, some people get fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia, myalgia. I know myalgia. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it is, that's true. I mean, we all, it's, a fact now the medical community has recognized it you know dis-ease right body is not at ease and um the medical community and therapeutic community is now recognizing the benefits of releasing stress from the body like meditation any physical activity like yoga or just working out in general to get it out of the body and i feel like too when you're doing when you're trying to release trauma it's you know, doing certain body movements helps to release trauma, but we also need to be mentally aware and clear out of our subconscious, which starts with the conscious mind, to go into the subconscious mind to, you know, intellectually recognize it and release it and also incorporating the body to release it too, and, and which is the, you know, how to embody healing, total complete embodiment, having the two together. So yeah, it's, it's, I think too, I think it, there needs to be a discussion, more discussion around um, the consequences of holding on to toxic relationships and situations. You know, I don't think people really recognize or realize the true cost of that. There's a true high price to pay by staying in toxic relationships over time. Mm -hmm. Like we all hear you know, cut off, you know, we, it's, a, it's such a huge cliche, especially when you go into personal development seminars. Because a lot of people embark on personal development to be successful in business. That's always the prime motivation, right? Um, because now you have to be in control. Like now you're responsible for yourself when you want to be a business owner. Like you have to make decisions. You have to be, you know, you're the creative idea maker, you know, so therefore, you, have, you know, personal development work becomes mandatory, right? So that's the initial motivation for most people, uh, or, you know, they want to climb up the corporate ladder. Um, so where was I going with this? Um, you're, you're doing, you're going into personal, oh yeah, the common cliche is cutting off toxic people, right? I heard that so many times. I can't, I mean, it's like the, every single development seminar that I went to, um, but nobody talked about the true costs of it, right? All they said was, if you want to be successful, you know, you're going to catapult once you get rid of the toxic people. <laughs> it's like, okay, 
And, uh, but I will say I kept, I held on to the toxic people, you know, and uh, cause I started going to personal development events like over 15 years ago, right? And so, cause I didn't recognize the true cost of uh, holding on to them and to, I, until I experienced it firsthand. <laughs> It's like, oh, that's why they say that. <laughs> that's right. why when you get rid of them, also I, you, I catapult to much more success and more energy and more clarity and more empowerment because they were draining your energy, creating a state of confusion through the anxiety they produce and taking time and energy away from yourself. Like, you know, cause they're literally draining you. And, um, mm -hmm. And also too, it's, you know, you start to create resent, resentments towards them and you can become bitter. You can, you can hold on to that and then project that onto other people. Like there's just so much um, mm -hmm. poison, different types of poisons they're injecting into you by staying in it that people are not recognizing, I don't think. And I think there needs to be a conversation around all of those micro poisons that they're injecting into you. It's not just draining your energy in terms of, you know, using it for them in terms of listening to them complaining or doing things for them or whatever it is, or getting upset when they covertly insult you, right? That's energy because then your body's angry and you're, you know, then you become more, you know, losing energy when you become angry. Then you can be using the energy towards your projects, towards people who actually love you, um, you know, going to the park or whatever it is that brings you joy and fills you up or brings you more success through maybe you need to write a blog article or do a project for work or something, right? So there's more to it. It's not just that. <laughs> there's a lot more poison around it than just pulling energy away from you. And another another little analogy to, to use um, is like, so if we're looking to flow in our life, right, we with, with the greatest ease, like highway to heaven, right, a highway to our dream life, right, where just everything's moving, everything's flowing, there's no traffic, like all green lights, you're just going, going. That's ideal, right? That's that's our that's what we aim for, right? Mm -hmm. with whether it be relationships that aren't supportive of this vision that aren't harmonious with our heart, whether it be um, lifestyle patterns that we just know aren't really serving us, but yet we're choosing to hang on to um, thought patterns of the, the doubt or the word, like, I can't do this. All of these things, right, are quote unquote toxins. However, and then another way to think of it, it's like, think of that as like a jammed up highway. It's like, you're not gonna get there when you've got all this other stuff, all these other cars, all this beeping, all this hogging, the, everything's jammed up, your gridlock. Like that's not going to allow for the most, optimal flow or like if you think of like if you want to think of like um a stream right like a stream is flowing there's that just emotion is clear water it's constantly moving and then you get all of like these sticks and mud and rocks and all this all of this debris right just kind of jumping. what happens there then water starts to stagnate and like you can't drink from that water it gets muddy there's flies all around it right it's just it goes from a beautiful stream to like a trickle so there's all these different ways of of just like you said again looking to nature seeing how things are reflecting this back like it's not just it could be applied to so many arenas and all there of like we need movement we need to flow we need ease and we need to know where it is where we want to go like having that vision for ourselves. going back to the beginning of like what are our values what defines the lanes what lane are we going to drive in 
So all of these things and, um, and just giving us a little bit of grace while, while we do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I completely agree. Um, this has been a phenomenal conversation, Melissa. <laughs> we touched on so <laughs> many key points and we really did dive deep into them. Uh, it's a very insightful, thought provoking conversation. And, you know, and hopefully other people can continue this conversation with your family and loved ones and with yourself. You know, this is why Happy Being Well podcast exists. And remember, subscribe so you don't miss another episode. So, Melissa, um, where can people find you if they want to learn more about you or ways, you know, they can work with you? Where can they, what's your website? What's your Instagram handle? Yeah, website is drmelissacrane.com and Instagram handle is at melissa.a.crane. And then I've been doing a lot of stuff on Clubhouse. So that would be like the, the best way, but everything is on Instagram up at that little link tree bio. So and what's your Clubhouse handle? Is it? Oh, Clubhouse is at M A Crane D C. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So guys, I'll have that information on the podcast description in the podcast episode description. So depending upon what podcast platform you're listening in from, you can either click it or copy and paste it into your website browser to check out drmelissacrane.com would be her hub where I'm sure you can find her Instagram there as well and you know ways to contact her from drmelissacrane.com which is really easy to remember some people have like really difficult websites to remember <laughs> like after they'll say it and I'm like I already forget the website <laughs> and I have to like go in their IG and like copy and paste it but yours is like super easy drmelissacrane.com I actually like that 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 last it sounds nice, Dr. Melissa Crane. It reminds me of Frazier. I think someone had the name Crane or Kramer. Kramer? Yeah, yeah Kramer. <laughs> yeah, Frazier oh. Crane. Dr. Frazier Crane. <laughs> yeah, I remember that show. Yeah. Uh, anywho, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much for pouring into the Happy Being Well audience and you know, devoting your time and energy and experience and insight to the Happy Being Well audience. I appreciated it. I'm sure everybody else has appreciated it. So guys, check her out on Instagram. Follow Melissa. If you're on Clubhouse, follow Melissa Crane on Clubhouse. She hosts rooms with other spiritually like-minded people and she's doing guided meditations on Clubhouse. So you can get some free guided meditations right on Clubhouse if you are part of Clubhouse community. And if you're not, I would, you know, if you are looking to tap into an online community, Clubhouse is a really great um, community to tap into. There's various rooms you can go into and just listen in or contribute as a speaker on stage, a virtual stage. It's pretty cool. Just be, have discernment when using it um, and just make sure you go into rooms that are aligned with who you are, such as Melissa's room, you know, where it's strictly, um, spiritual um, because just like in the real world not everything is perfect and we have to have discernment and you know go into positive rooms when using clubhouse so thanks melissa so much and guys this podcast is sponsored by happybeingwell.com your place to get irresistible leggings sage palo santo natural candles crystals and so much more in happy being well dot com and you can also download some free wellness books at happybeingwell.com like plant-based recipes and um essential oils guide and a free self-care journal as well along with other really cool books as well like uh overcoming limiting beliefs and much more on our resources page so thanks, Melissa, and bye, everybody. Sending light and love, and remember, be happy being well.